Hey, welcome back to the channel, my fellow weather junkies. I'm your host, meteorologist Greg Majeski, your trusted weather source, bringing you the weather without all that social media hype here on your February 20th, 2025. Let's go ahead and take a look at what we're tracking here for today as we're going to see that frigid cold slowly heading on out of the country as we head toward the weekend. We do have a February thaw coming, but the big question is, will it last? I'll answer that question here as we take a look at the latest model data here. And I'm still tracking a potential March severe in the first week of March. We'll see how the latest models are showing that as well. Now, before we get going, we'd like to welcome any new subscribers here on the channel. And if you haven't yet officially subscribed, why don't you help this poor guy out? Hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you're alerted on future content. And if you like what you see, please leave a comment down below. Give me a thumbs up. I do appreciate your support. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the big picture. Looking nationally here, it's fairly quiet here across the East Coast. Got some snows across the Great Lakes and going into Pennsylvania. This here is just bitterly cold air. It shows up at, on the infrared imagery, especially when you talk about temperatures, uh, say, minus 25. It shows up pretty well. Not as robust as it was yesterday, but clearly there. Here's that little storm system that moved on the West Coast yesterday, kind of swirling some snows across portions of Utah there and moving into Colorado. West Coast getting a bit of a break. Next system probably in the day or two away before showing up into the Pacific Northwest. So not bad there across Southern California and into Northern California. All right, looking at the big picture, still got some wintry precipitation here, kind of exiting here off the mid-Atlantic. Again, we got some snows out here in the west as well, across Idaho, coming down, down toward Utah. And as we look at the big picture, there's that big dome of Arctic high pressure there in the middle of the country. Uh, see temperatures here, one degree, minus seven in southern near Joplin. I know there's a minus two there in northwestern portions of Arkansas as well. So very cold, very frigid air. Even got some snow flurries here across portions of the deep south going in from Mississippi all the way up into areas of Virginia. We'll show some of the snow here across Virginia. Some pretty good snowbirds coming through areas of Roanoke for this morning down toward Rocky Mountain and Blacksburg. So a snowy commute for these folks going into work today if they happen to go to work. I think that's not too bad. They probably are doing okay for it today. Let's go ahead and take a look at their thunderstorm outlook over the next three days. Not going to see a whole lot there as we have thunderstorms, obviously, with that big Arctic high pressure and control. But we do have some returning here by the time we head toward day three. So going into this upcoming weekend, we'll go ahead and pull that for you real quick. Let's take a look at that. By day three, going, we got a little bit of thunderstorms returning down here right along the Gulf Coast and around Texas. But other than that, that is about it. Now, as far as a heavy rain threat, obviously not seeing a whole lot of that. We do have a day three outlook for that one as well, except for this time, we're talking about up here across the areas of the Pacific Northwest down into near Northern California. That's what that next storm system coming in that was offshore I showed you there on the satellite imagery. All right, let's go look at the latest model data. We're gonna start off by first taking a look at the jet stream. That's that river of air that drives our weather systems across the country. And obviously the big story has to be that big polar vortex there kind of set up there, bringing in that nice cold air across the big chunk of the country. We're gonna say goodbye to this thing, get lost, get ridden, goodbye. It moves on out of here. And we're gonna see uh, temperatures begin to moderate across the country from uh, coast to coast as we go in toward uh, early next week. We're definitely seeing a more progressive flow here, uh, more of a zonal flow here. And as you can see, the two jet streams there uh, kind of disconnected here briefly. And that'll be, that'll be nice and mild, a nice warm up, especially across the southeast going into areas into Tuesday. Now, as we go toward the end of the week, though, all good things must come to an end. And with the pattern we've been in here lately, you know we're going we're gonna to pay for it. Here's another one. Boom. As you can see, that nice dip in the jet stream. We'll get another cold shot coming in down as we head toward the 27th and 28th of February. That moves on out and it continues to stay in place, goes right into the 1st and 2nd. So it looks like we'll see uh, milder temperatures in the west. We'll see the colder temperatures here in the east. We've got another storm system out here on the west coast coming in as we head toward the 1st. All right, let's go ahead and continue this track on, on up by. And then we're going to turn our attention to that 4th and 5th. We've got a little pinch off of this upper level low system here. And I'm really concerned about this system right here. We're talking about this low here pinching off. And you see the jet stream kind of doing this thing. So again, we have to watch the 4th and 5th for the potential for some severe weather. Still tracking that. Again, we're still talking 300 hours out, folks. So it is subject to change. But that's something you look for when you're looking for severe weather, especially as you start turning the calendar and going into meteorological uh, spring starting into March. So this moves off toward the east. So we got to watch that across Texas going into the southeast for some severe weather uh, with that system. But uh, behind it, once again, another decent cold shot here uh, across the eastern third of the United States. So it looks like we got several cold shots. We got a brief warm up next week and then three cold shots coming in behind this as we go into the month of March, wrapping up February. 
All right, so as far as our short range forecast, not a lot to show you. We got this little disturbance out here out in Utah, system clearing here off the east coast, and we got another system coming out there on the west coast. So let's go ahead and track this. Again, that little st disturbance there coming through Colorado really falls apart. There we get we get clearance in the east. So going into Friday, it looks like a lot of the east is going to see a lot of sunshine. If I can draw a nice sunshine there, there you go. <laughs> Poor man's snow, uh, uh, sunshine there. But we do have uh, another storm system coming out here on the west coast. See that moving on in there. And as I click this all in and throughout the day on Saturday, we'll see the rains there increasing across portions of south Texas going into Saturday. I'm going to Friday night and into Saturday. So a little bit of rain down here to watch. we got some rains and some snow, interior mountain snows. But that's about it going into this upcoming weekend. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the European model. I'm going to take you beyond Saturday night going into Sunday. Again, a lot of the country quiet, except for the areas there in the Pacific Northwest. And it's just cold here. Obviously still holding on to the cold air across areas of the Great Lakes. So let's go ahead and track this again as we're going to see things warm up across the deep south. You can definitely tell as we go in toward Tuesday, uh, look where that freezing 540 line in has moved way back up here toward the north, at least temporarily, as we're going to see things uh, uh, begin to turn back cold again as we got another shot here. Here comes that system coming into Thursday and Friday. So here's our initial cool down. Boom. That's the first one. That's number one. We got another one right behind it as well. So we got two of them, the track. Here's the, here's the second one. It'll follow right behind it. It dives down. Oh, look at this. It's another little piece of polar vortex dropping down into the Great Lakes. Very cold little cold core dropping on down. And this comes on down this way. And it's going to be quite nippy as this moves on by. And then we'll see how that moves on out. And then we got our next system. This is the one we'll watch going in toward the third and fourth. If we get the severe weather with this. Snows on the back side of this as this moves off toward the east. And this will press off toward the east. And we'll see uh, heavy snows here on the back side here across portions of the high uh, plains and coming back into the into areas of Wisconsin and Michigan as we go into March. So it looks like this pattern, if it continues going through the month of March, I really expect it to be a snowy, snowy March. And it looks like the snow, the snows will continue here across the Great Lakes and New England with another cold shot. Look at that freezing line all the way down here and across uh, the southeast once again as we head toward the 6th of March. So as we go ahead and take a look at our precipitation outlook here over the next 10 days. It looks like we're going to finish up the month of February uh, kind of limited, kind of a dry period. I think that picks up again, though, as we head into the month of March. So we'll go for the next three days here, at least initially. The only place it looks like they're going to get anything of real significance uh, is really the Pacific Northwest, Washington State in Oregon. Some snows here, a little bit of light rain here across South Texas, little snows out here in the Intermountain region, but really not looking that bad. And as we go out for the next 10 days, we'll take it out to 240. It picks up a little bit, as you can see. Uh, definitely going to see the snows uh, start to crank up here across the Great Lakes. A little more rains here along the Gulf Coast. Definitely very rainy out here on the West Coast. And again, I think the trend, though, as we get deeper in the month of March, look how we start lighting things up, see how things kind of start filling in. That's why I'm expecting a little more activity in the month of March, as well as uh, great opportunities for snow as well. So speaking of snow, as far as the short term is concerned, not going to see a lot of that. Definitely going out for the next 72 hours, next three days. Uh, just a very light amounts here across the, the parts of the Ohio River Valley, the Great Lakes, a little bit here in the Intermountain West, but really not that bad here going into this weekend. Now, 10 day, it's a little bit different story. As we go out 10 days, we got a few little shots of that cold air that's going to be bringing in more snows here across the Great Lakes, Intermountain region here as we begin the month of March. But look what happens as I go further in. You start filling it in quite a, quite rapidly there. Get some more snows here across the plains, across the Intermountain region, and across the, the northeast. So it uh, looks like we're going to finish G uh, the month of February. February, uh, kind of dry, and then it looks like the activity starts to pick up again as we head into the first week of March. Now, we got to track this cold air. Obviously, we got one more really bitterly cold night here uh, going into Thursday morning. Look at your below zero line here. That's your actual air temperature. Got a couple of pockets there in the northeast as well. And then when you put factor in the wind chill, there's going to be some winds around with this for, uh, for tomorrow morning as well. And you're going to see uh, quite a bit of this. So let me switch over to this. There we go. And you can see, look how much bigger this is 
as far as this covers with the wind chill. So below zero wind chills here in the northeast, uh, even getting down into areas of the south as well. And going a little bit closer, you can kind of see that. Look, I mean, there's a minus two here across northern Mississippi. Here's a minus four near DFW, uh, minus 23 there into Kansas City, Chicago, minus 10. So uh, again, a very bitterly cold start to the day there on your Thursday morning. And then going to Friday, it's still going to be cold, but it is going to begin to modify. So let's go and track that cold air again. Boy, you see that purple? You know you're talking to some very cold temperatures here, folks. We're talking 30 degrees below average plus into that zone. So watch as we say goodbye to this, okay? So this is begins to but slowly but surely begin to improve as we go through the weekend as that moves on off. And looks where we're going to be as we head toward Tuesday. Ah, if we could only hold on to this, right? Look at this. Big part of the country here to see a nice February thaw. But you like, you know what all I can tell you is don't get used to it because I'm tracking one, two, three different cold shots coming in as we go beyond this uh, shot. So watch as you go toward the 26th and 27th. That's our first cold shot right there. there's the, That's the first one. And you clearly see it's milder out here in the west. Got a little cutoff low here off the off this California coast. So that is that's number one. Let's go track number two. Here's number two. Boom, there's number two coming down, going into the second and third. So, you know, that one's even stronger right there. A little bit cooler out on the West Coast there as the upper level system moves in out on the West Coast. And then let's track number three. That's number two. And then here comes number three. All right, number three going toward the sixth and seventh. Again, looking at uh, predominantly looks like minus 20 below normal into that zone as well, uh, going in toward the sixth and seventh. So we're talking three different cold shots. And, and because of that, those different shots, obviously greater opportunities for storm system development, severe weather, as well as more snows coming on in here. So let's go ahead and wrap this up. Let's look at your climate outlook here, uh, starting first with your six to 10 day outlook here. Right now, near normal through the first. So wrapping up the month with uh, near normal here in the east, above normal here in the west. But this change is obviously going out toward the fifth. Below normal here in the east, we're definitely seeing that, obviously, with those three cold shots. Still relatively mild out here in the West, although we'll see if this continues to trend. Obviously, we, we were seeing the long range projecting a little bit cooler out here on the West Coast. We'll see if that trend continues with the afternoon update here. As far as the precipitation, we already highlighted this. We know that we're not seeing a lot of storm systems here as we wrap up the month of February. But as we go into the first week, a little more progressive pattern. We start filling in a little more green and it gets a little bit drier out here on the, the West Coast as we go through March the 5th. So, all right, so we're looking pretty good for this upcoming weekend, not looking bad there. Again, we do have a warm up for you folks who are tired of the cold, but I know spring, meteorological spring is supposed to start in March. It does appear going into that first week of March that winter's saying, uh-uh, not so fast. And again, I'm really concerned about the fact that we're continuing this pattern with this, these polar vortex, a piece of energy continue to dump down into the United States. And as we get deeper in the month of March and the southern tier begins to warm more and more, the clash setup is definitely setting up to be there. Uh, so that obviously means greater opportunities for severe weather, greater opportunities, maybe even for some blizzards and heavy snow. And that's something we'll have to watch as we go throughout the month of March. It looks like February was pretty active. I think March will continue that trend. At least that's the way it's looking on this date on February 20th. All right, that's y'all's update for now. If you have not yet subscribed to the channel, what are you waiting for, my friend? Please hit that subscribe button in that bottom right-hand corner. If you got something you'd like to see, please leave a comment down below and give me a like. I do appreciate y'all's help. That's your update for today. You guys take it easy, be good, stay safe, and we'll see you next time. Bye, guys.